Hello and welcome to Artists at Work here at Community Focus. Here's where we have some casual yet interesting and uh, conversations, just simple conversations with creative people. And every month we invite a new guest. And this month we invited Kathleen Harrington, who does some wonderful work and it just kind of changes it up. Um, and you, thank yes. you for coming, Kathleen. Thank you for having me, Ellen. Yeah. This is exciting. <laughs> it's scary and exciting. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and what I, what I love about you is that you change it up. You do watercolor, you do acrylic, you've done collage. I do. I, I, I'm always looking for a new thing to try or something new to incorporate with what I've already been doing and just to try to push the boundaries a little bit more. And, and another thing that I think is really great about you is that you yourself taught or yes. you talk, took yes. some lessons but yes. you didn't have formal training yes. um, and it was maybe in 96 or so you took a took a lesson a watercolor lesson I did it was it was a little early it was in the 80s and I started taking watercolor lessons with Gretchen Bierbaum who was a fixture in Hudson so many people have taken classes with her and we always had so much fun and um, as sh I learned more about the techniques of watercolor, we kept trying new things and she was getting into collage work and she actually founded the National Collage Society and I was right there at the time. I was doing collage all the time. Um, I think we brought one. Yeah, here, right this here. One here. This one right here. Um, this is a large collage that incorporates all kinds of things, fabric and uh, cut up paintings and, and it, it was sort of reminiscent of when I was little and I would bake with my mom. Mm -hmm. so, and there I, you are. There I am with my <laughs> little brown pigtail things going on there. And we were making evident, evidently cupcakes. Um, but using a medium like collage, it, mm -hmm. it really you enables you it. to be so creative. The, the chandelier is a stamp. Is, oh, is, is it? Yeah, it was originally oh, okay. a stamp. Um, all kinds Elevated of things Elevated the happening. kitchen look. <laughs> it's, we're looking into the dining room, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but it just happens as you're, you're painting and gluing and things evolve. And um, So I got really into collage. and I'm a signature member of the National Collage Society. And eventually, it took over my house. There were <laughs> torn up bits of paper and magazine. There was always glue on my fingers. And I said, I have to kind of get control of this. It's, it's taking over. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I cut back on collage work. I said, OK. It's, it's, I still occasionally do some. Mm -hmm. But um, for the mo most part, I don't do large pieces anymore in collage, maybe small ones. Now, we had an artist on here who's a magazine collage artist. And she works in tiny, tiny little pieces. Yeah. And her, you know, her studio area, which is half of one of her rooms, it's just like you said, it's taken over with magazines piled up and Absolutely. all sorted out by color. So I can imagine how, when you're talking about including fabric on top of that, or bits of rusted metal that you things. find in the parking lot. I mean, coffee <laughs> beans, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're not super organized and you don't keep things really put away it, it just it's mm. you you know you have it and you can't find it <laughs> so I, I you know I'm in awe of her that she can keep everything separated by color and size mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. and what what's great too is that the collage association and then watercolors mm -hmm. and each one it's it's one because it gives you a sense of community you paint with other you people do. you have the plain air um, so that after the collage, then you was, did you continued with the watercolor? I did. Um, I, always, I always do watercolor. But I said, well, you know, let's try something that is not as hard as watercolor. Let's try acrylics because <laughs> you can paint over it. Where if you're painting a watercolor and you make a mistake, that's pretty much it. There's no going back. There's no fixing. You can mm. maybe try to turn it into something happy, like a happy little mistake. <laughs> but there's no fixing. No. You can't just like put more water on it, white it out, and kind of... Not very well. No, no it doesn't the really. the whole paper's too wet. It, it just doesn't. They're transparent colors for the most part. Just, you know, it just doesn't. So acrylics allows you to do all kinds of crazy things. And <laughs> <laughs> Like um, this? <laughs> like this. This is a later day acrylic. Um, this is something I just did a year or so ago. Um, what I did was use liquid acrylics and let them get real runny. And then you're just sort of flinging them and letting them drip. Oh. And the whole thing, and oh, then literally just fly it yeah, on. Yeah, you just take a big, big brush. Don't give me any of those little big brush, and you're just flinging paint, 
And then when the whole thing is covered, you go back and you paint in your negative space. The sky oh. was painted in later. Like oh, this was okay. everywhere. Oh my goodness. Everything was all colors and shapes. And you go back in later and add your sky and go back and add your uh, light in the background at the okay. bottom. That wasn't there until the very end. So then you give the definition and just make it, uh, yeah. what about this, when that, you just flung that one? Yeah. <laughs> I flung it. <laughs> then it. And then it drips. It drips and you, and can you let it drip. It if it isn't dripping enough, you can spray it with like rubbing alcohol oh. to make it more runny and uh, more... It, it, it's push, push, push. What else can you do to this thing to <laughs> <laughs> to get a well, different look? <laughs> but all this now, usually, I hear people say, "I you always start with the background," and this is the reverse. This is of the that. opposite. This is you're painting a lot of negative space afterwards. Okay. Yeah. And originally the sky was blue, and then I was like, "It's boring," so I went back <laughs> and I painted over that again and made it lavender, and. Why not? Yeah. Well, what's <laughs> nice is it sounds like it, as opposed to the watercolor that's not forgiving at all. Mm -mm. The acrylics is just the opposite. You can of that. do just and you the can just opposite. Keep doing. Um, and another. Let me see, the one behind you is a very early acrylic here. The, the abstract. Mm -hmm. And I'll just leave it to everyone to decide what they see because I have had so many people tell me, "Oh, I see the Marlboro Man," <laughs> I or "I know. see a horse," I or "I see uh, two people kissing," or "I." And um, that's a lot of acrylic. It's a lot of rough paint as palette knife. Oh, it is a palette too. Isn't palette it? knife was used. And a brush. brush was used. Um, all kinds Can of things I see going some bronze on. Bronze. Yeah, there was mm -hmm. bronze paint. I don't think I glued any paper into that one, but you can collage into acrylic paint. There's some texture here where it's a little heavier with the palette. It's probably. probably used. I probably used a medium. I believe I used one of the acrylic mediums. That's real thick. Oh, and okay. you can make texture and then paint over that. Mm -hmm. Now, did you start with it? Because I, for me, I clearly see a head. Did you okay. start with any figures, or you no? Just I just started painting. I didn't really have a big plan of what <laughs> I was doing. I picked colors and just put some music on. And just do it. <laughs> just do it. Just do it. Get out of the way. Let it happen. <laughs> That's an acrylic. The flowers. This one here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Which um, almost looks more like an oil. To me, okay. well, I don't know if that's. It's just maybe because of the way the, the brush stroke be. is, or the, it the could layer be. It, of it. it. It's acrylic, but it's but it's acrylic. And what you were telling yeah. me before is, you yeah. can put oils over acrylic. And, uh, yes. Is that the right way? Yes, that's right. You can fat add over, oil. Uh, yes, but you can't do the reverse. Right. It's called fat over lean because oil has a lot of uh, oil paints have a lot of oil there, and so as they dry very very slowly. So if you put acrylics over them. And acrylics dry very fast, like in minutes, it'll crack. Um, and your oil underneath is not dry yet. But you can paint an acrylic painting and then go back and, you know, paint oil over that. Maybe almost use the acrylic as an underpainting. Okay. So why would you want to put the oil over it? Is it because it gives you more texture and more weight to it? Um, more clarity of color? Could be, it could, maybe? yeah, it could be. It could be just to cover your canvas. It's almost like a primer. It could be just because you don't like the acrylic and you want to do something different. <laughs> and you thought, I'll wait, I'll start with this. I'm sure one. there's a million reasons people <laughs> have. But if you're going to do it, you have to put the oil on top of the acrylic, not the other way around. Okay. Yeah. And that, there is a, um, another group that you work with that's called the Whiskey Painters of I America. I am. I was so honored to be accepted into that. Whiskey painting is something that started back after the war. and um, Which one? <laughs> or two. I okay. think it was two. Right. <laughs> in Akron. So it was in the founded early, in Akron. late 40s, early 50s. And the story was that the draftsmen would leave the rubber companies at night and go to the Tangiers and sit at the bar in and Akron. paint these mm -hmm. tiny little paintings and um, on cocktail napkins or whatever and then barter them for drinks and dinner. <laughs> and they were getting really successful at this. So they said, well, let's, you know, form a group. And they did. And it's a worldwide group of pay people who do whiskey paintings. And the, the key thing is that you dip your brush into your drink, into your whiskey, your alcohol, not water. Uh -huh. So you've got watercolor paints, little tiny palettes, and a little jigger of your favorite libation. <laughs> and you're painting with that on little tiny, no bigger than four by five inches. Um, and uh, there are a hundred. Four by five, which is like about like that, right? Yeah, I'll, I one brought one to. Sh I brought okay. a couple to show you. And the so reason that 
they are small and that the paint is small because the founder wanted what? to be able to put it into in his, his pocket. pocket. He tra traveled. Pocket. He traveled. He was a salesman in sales or uh, something. And John what? Pike, who invented the Pike palette in New York, and um, it was being made, the plastic palette was being made here in Akron. So oh. he came to Akron and they were designing this and they said we'll make these tiny little palettes <laughs> and uh, and here we go. And so there's 150 whiskey painters in the world. There's a website, Whiskey Painters of America. And unfortunately someone needs to pass on before there's an opening for a new artist uh, to come in. And as, as a whiskey painter you can um, sponsor up to two people in 10 years to be a new whis whiskey painter. And I just sponsored my, my first person this year, a um, wonderful artist from the West Side named Jim Sens. And we're going to be whiskey painting together in Lakewood on August 15th at a place called Artful Living. Oh, okay. And we'll be doing a little demo and visiting and schmoozing uh -huh. and, you know. Yeah, yeah, and you do a lot of what you call paint outs and it's we get all together a, like a few a times a year yeah and you um, do um, we we paint here's here, i can switch this is a smaller whiskey painting that uh so they can be small they just can't be bigger forward. than four by five inches and uh this was in the na in in the national show at Kygo falls oh, in may okay. so yeah and it's 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 great too because you have a nice um well, you do in you do winter paintouts and summer paintouts at the park, and yes. and then uh, and then you do selections while you have shows as well. We have shows, and when we get together to paint, we get a little sticker that says where we were and the date, and then we all trade a painting. So I'm building up a nice collection of whiskey paintings myself. <laughs> <laughs> So that's whiskey painting, yeah. I like there was a window display when you had a gallery of it in, uh, at, over Christmas time and they mm -hmm. had S Santa dressed up and with his easel in the window <laughs> and he had his whiskey bottle. I think he had Crown Royal I or something. I think Santa had some Crown Royal. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That was down at Hudson Fine Art in yep. Grammy. And we'll be there again this December. That's right in the middle of Hudson and there'll be another show there. So I'm sure when we Santa get... Santa will be back. Santa should surprise. be back. A little more Crown Royal, <laughs> a little more paint. Now this one here. Um, this one? Oh. Okay. So yeah, this that's one. the oil one. This right? is an oil. Okay. Now we're moving from whiskey painting into <laughs> oils, which I only um, started painting in oils about a year, year and a half ago. Oh. And I, I'm coming to love it. At first I didn't because they take so long to dry and I was used to the acrylics. It's just a matter of getting used to it. Yeah. So this was done plein air, where you actually go out and you stand in someone's yard and paint, uh, or in the National Park. I do a lot in the National Park. It's so beautiful. So, and so it's easy to find a, a one little spot, spot that can just be yeah. full of color, especially this Yeah, you hope for some shade and, you know, <laughs> not too far from the parking lot. And everybody comes over and says, ooh, what they are you doing? They do. You get to meet the best yeah. people. Absolutely. But now, so you opted to do oils instead of, like, watercolor, which is faster, or the acrylic, right. even though right. this takes longer to dry. Now, why would you do that? Well, in, you got, in you've the got things air. like if, you're, if it's 90 degrees and you're painting in watercolor, your paper's going to dry up oh. very fast. There's, there's issues like that to think about. And um, watercolor's not forgiving. You, you make your choice. You're with it. Oil, uh, people prefer oil, too, I think, often. You know, for purchase, you mean? Is that to own, to yeah. Own. People will say, is that an oil? And I'll say, no, it's acrylic. And they'll say, oh, no. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Not good enough. Oh. They, it's, an, it's a thing. So. Even though they were yeah. attracted to it, it's but, beautiful. But you certainly could plein air paint with pastels or watercolor, anything. The point being that you're outside. Yeah. And... Uh, and you want it to be, well, you want to keep it small because you want to be able to finish it in you a You want to be able to finish it. And you may have to be carrying it back and forth mm -hmm. ways. And, yeah, you want to be done with it eventually that day. <laughs> <laughs> and I know when you talked about the oils because they take so long, there are other artists um, like Rob Crombie, who's a local artist. Yes. And he loves to do, oh, I mean, I'm it's all oils, and he puts them heavy. On yes, heavily. on heavily. And sometimes you say it doesn't even use a brush. He might use it I've seen him in a demo. Uh -huh. yep. But he enjoys the fact that, well, he used to, he said he used to get French paint. I mean, it came, he would yes. go in France when he was yes. in Tuscany painting. And he would enjoy it. Now he said it's, it's just impossible to get them anymore. But what he liked about it was that he could just play with it 
mm -hmm. oh, for a long period of time True. because it took so long. It took so and long he to would dry. Like, it would almost be like right. stringing cheese or something uh -huh. where he would pull up the weeds in a, or right. the wheat in his field or something. And, and, he, and, for and, him, he and reveal it. the paint underneath, right. which might be a different shade mm -hmm. or a different color. Yeah. So it all depends on yeah. You and know, he what tends your to do is. fairly large plein air pieces. Oh, and he does that plein air too, because some he of his does. pieces are usually some of them. Big. I've seen I've seen photos of him on location, like uh -huh. in France mm -hmm. uh, or even around here, and he often does large pieces. Yeah. You know. And I want, I don't know how much of it he finishes in the studio. Or I, I but don't for know. Him, I he enjoys know. that, and he, that's what he liked about the French paints, is because they stayed wet longer, longer, and he could he could play with them longer. Yeah. So it's all a matter of it's what matter you enjoy, what you enjoy, <laughs> what works for you, yeah. and getting used to something mm -hmm. is the big thing. Yeah. Now those little cards oh. that you have right there, the tiny little ones, which are all right. This incorporates watercolor or acrylic or oil, and they are called an artist card or an ACEO, and that means. Mm -hmm. um, if it's an ACEO, it has to be exactly this size, two and a half by three, three and a half inches. It can be painted on anything. It can be painted with anything, but it has to be that size. Okay. And uh, the big marketplace for these is uh, eBay. So people would list one of these on eBay. I start them at like $10, and then they get auctioned. Over the week, they may get bid higher, or they may not. Mm. It may be yours for ten dollars, and then I, I send it off. So, um, this one is oil. This one is watercolor. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, this one is some. I don't. I think it was acrylic. I don't. Know. Well, what what I liked that you were saying how they well, I, people used to collect. They do. That there was one woman who collected over a uh, couple hundred. Um, Lighthouses. Yes. And it yes. had to be a lot, you know, but that's very specific when yes. you're talking about yes. having to do a certain Well, I size started selling these on eBay probably 10 years ago, and I've sold over a thousand. And I noticed that whenever I did one of the lighthouse, this lady in, she was in the UP, Upper Michigan, huh. she would buy it. And I finally, you know, I said, what, what are you doing what with all the that? lighthouses? <laughs> and she said she was making a chair rail. And she, oh. she took each one and, you know, glued it where the chair wear would be, going all around the room. And when she had the whole room filled with little paintings, <laughs> and she laminated, she varnished over them, and um, that was the chair rail in her now, house. Now, she wasn't an artist herself. I was no, she had a house on the ones. lake, and she liked lighthouses. <laughs> <and that's laughs> it was working her 12 by 12 room around. That's but um, it's, a it's, it's a niche market, uh -huh. and people collect them. So when she start listing things, people follow you. And they may buy 50 or 100 over the years. Wow. One lady sent me an Excel spreadsheet with all the paintings of mine <laughs> that she had bought. She had, oh, she had the actual pictures she picked, of Yeah, she this. took the image and all the, the, the description and the selling price and the date, and she sent it to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need oh you to goodness. come organize my studio. Yeah, I was say, here's your <laughs> records right there. <laughs> she has she didn't know all. you needed them or wanted them. But yeah, <laughs> no, she, she knew them all. So it, it, and she was looking for more? <laughs> um, you know what? She's sort of retired now. She, I think she feels like she's maxed out. But <laughs> <Thank you laughs> she lives in Stone Mountain, Georgia, oh. and I still hear from her occasionally. And that's the thing—you meet you meet such great people. Yeah, that's what, like what I was saying with all yeah. these different associations that you are are, are part of a, the group. Yeah, you get such a sense of community, and it kind of—and I would think that it even inspires you further it, to it, different try different things, like you know, like, like you a whiskey here, like painting could be an ACEO. Why not? You could know, be. could be. Yeah. Um, what yeah. What else yeah. have we brought here? Oh, I, I don't know. Let's, um, here, let's try this. Oh, that was another national one. Um, there was a group Oops. of about. Yeah, I'll hold that it. one. There's a group of about 30 artists who got together, uh, called ourselves the Crooked River Gang, and we showed our art down in the national park at the MD Garage, which unfortunately has been closed. Um, the park felt they needed the space for mm -hmm. other things. But we felt, as you know, pa artists, we're going to keep painting. So yeah. you were there for like twenty years. Twenty or so, right? years. But now they just built years. their new visitor center. Yes. Right, just down right, the road. Right down from there. the road. So it's probably got a new purpose. Uh, we're, in it. We've got a small hope that maybe they'll find a place for us next year. Oh, maybe year. you can do some things within the visitor yeah. center as well. It right. Might be but this out. year we are not there, but we are in other places. So we were at Hudson Fine Art and Framing in June, in July. I'm sorry, in July. And in August, we'll be at the Watershed, and um, it's a Metro Park in mm -hmm. Parma. Cleveland Metro Park yep. in Parma. Beautiful uh -huh. facility. I think it's the and West Creek. September, yes, West Creek. 
September, the, whisk, the um, Crooked River Gang will be in Brecksville at the Framers Gallery. So at the park, we would always have a theme. And one year, the theme was Nash, or Na Beautiful National Parks, Beautiful America. So I did this painting specifically for that show of the um, Jefferson Memorial. So, That's beautiful. Thank, yeah, you. Like that. thank you. So, and this gang, which was is about 25 plus people, right? Yes. How, how did it, why did that get together or what was the? Oh, years ago, uh, there was an artist in the Valley named Don Getz. He passed away a couple of years ago. And Don felt, saw this vision that he, he was uh, a draftsman who, who designed cars and worked on um, cars. And he said, let's, have, let's have open the garage and do a show in there of cars you know, paintings of cars, and, mm -hmm. and they did it as a one-time thing, and it was so popular, he said, well, why don't we expand this, you, the, the building's here, and I'll get some more artists, and we'll bring in more artwork, and that's how it got started mm -hmm. 20 years ago. That's so, right. And we kept it going. And you always try to have a theme. Every like month, this. April through October, we, ha we opened every Saturday, Sunday, and holiday, and we staffed it. And we don't, well, there was a commission paid to the upkeep of the park from every mm -hmm. painting sold, too. Well, what I like, too, is that you said that the one that you're going to be doing in the Cleveland Metro Parks in Parma mm -hmm. at the West Creek Reservation, mm -hmm. you're going to, that one's going to have the theme of pollination because of yes. the They're the doing an educational of unit. And the yeah. Bees. Yeah. And then, and when we were selecting your uh, <laughs> assortment here today, there was one that you pulled out and said, oh, this is perfect because it, it was like wildflowers yes. in a meadow or yes. garden, and you yes. pulled that out and said, I'll, I'll add some pollinating I did. I insects. added butterflies. Did you? I did. It's actually on my Facebook page, and someone asked me last <laughs> night if I would sell it to her directly. Oh, my goodness. So I may have, have to do another one before Friday. Oh, wow. <laughs> Because that starts in that's the July we're dropping one. off this yeah we're dropping everything off on this or weekend and it, it'll all be up and hanging next Monday at the watershed, yeah yeah okay. see what I mean about going back yeah. and adding more things uh -huh. to paintings and now of course with more social media everybody sees things so quickly that it's wonderful yeah, that's good for you <laughs> in that sense yeah no and I think I have another, another oh floral one over here yeah that was um, that's acrylic. And I just was trying different things. There's paint spatters in here, and there's textured uh, circle things, <laughs> just to give it more yeah, depth. Yeah, um, Yeah, yeah. I think I used I a stamp on one. some of it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now, when you what? use a stamp. Here, you see that circle thing? Oh, OK. So I stamped so it's just into a the wet stamp paint, and, you put it in. and I, when I lifted it, it took off the top layer of paint, revealing the pink paint underneath. Oh. Okay, because yeah. that was your undercoating. There. My undercoat. Can can we see the, the space picture? Oh yeah. I don't know if that's. Mm -hmm. That is an acrylic, but I used the um, photo a photo from the Hubble spacecraft as a reference. So that is actually a nebula, which I feel very ignorant. I forgot the name of it, <laughs> but it is. Oh, it has. I don't know that much about I the know. stars. So nebula is they, they name them just like they do the yes, stars. Yes, they and all the have names and numbers and locations. And a nebula is a like a collection of stars that circle together. Yeah, I don't yeah. know, I'm making this up. I, I, and I'm going. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Anyway, the Hubble. A anyway, it's a space <laughs> Hubble image that I used as as the reference uh, in acrylics, and it's it's just different. It's just a different subject matter, you know that. Yeah, and it's uh, kind of almost looks abstract as well because you start to see figurative items in there uh, you know you, you could see moon mm -hmm. face or whatever mm -hmm. you want to make into it but then the stars are very clearly done around it as well I actually use the end of the paintbrush not the brush but the, the pointy wood end the wood yeah you yeah. just dip that in the paint make dip a dot and then smear it I'm giving oh. you all my secrets <laughs> here <laughs> and that's what you made the stars with most of them yeah yeah that's great. <laughs> I love that. It's more celestial. Try everything. You might want to get into that whole genre of celestial You know, it, and there are, right? there, is, there is a group of artists who paint. Another inter, group inter, 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 An international <laughs> astronomical. And um, you talk about Facebook and the social media. Yes. I have a, a friend. <laughs> she's real, <laughs> but we've never met. <laughs> Uh, in Australia, and she started painting these, and she inspired me to start looking at doing this. And her name's Marie Green, and she painted beautiful. Now she's moved on to do other things, but like me, you you go through different cycles yeah. and you try different things. So. Well, and that's what's great because it just keeps your creative juices flowing and to try to you, you know to shake it up, do something new. Mm -hmm. 
You don't want to keep doing the same tree yeah. over and over again. You know, yeah, I've what seen it? sometimes you see artists and you go, oh, yeah. those are nice, but they all look alike. They all look Why alike. Why would I want to do that? What do we have out front? Oh, that was a collage um, that I did many years okay. ago. And it incorporates watercolor. Um, <sighs> this, this was based on, um, I took a workshop with an abstract artist named Maxine Masterfield. Oh, and we were doing these large pieces of paper and using spray bottles. So mm -hmm. like in here, all these, the, can you, whoops, can you see all the polka dots? Oh the, yeah. Yeah, it's spray, spray paint, spray ink. Oh, and I can see the depth in it when you look on this yeah. side Yeah, the, and then we took the paper to and tore it up and then glued it back onto here. Um, so it's original paintings that you tear up and reuse. Okay. And then I've got um, glitter and I think a piece of braided embroidery floss mm -hmm. and all kinds of things just to make the sense of movement. I love so. And now is this one like a few years ago? Yeah, this was, a, this was probably back in the collage days, back in the 80s. <laughs> it, it, it does, it's, you know, it certainly weathers in the time it as does. well. It does, it's framed it's under glass. So all the, it should be. The colors yeah. and it's still, I think it's great. Thank and you. And it gives it more, it almost looks like a mm -hmm. landscape. Oh, I'll show you. This one mm -hmm. is um, a local artist. I took a workshop with him about a year or so ago, a one-day workshop. His name is Christopher Leeper, and Christopher is a fabulous artist, and we were working on watercolor. Mm -hmm. He's a watercolorist primarily. That was the workshop, and I used the colors that he, his palette, which is vibrant and deep colors. Yeah. Yeah. I might as well autumnal look. To yes. Me, but, so look up Christopher. He's great. That's beautiful. I love the, the blueness of the sky. I know, and I was like, really, that color? And he's like, yeah, try this. <laughs> try it, okay. <laughs> there, so. Well, and especially since you, we have the Cuyahoga Va National Park. Such a treasure. Right here, I mean, you could not, you could be in there, yeah. lost in there for years. And yes, not, and not the waterfalls, run out of the covered bridge, there's so many beautiful locations to paint there. And we do, there's often artists are out there painting. You know, Horseshoe Pond and Kendall Lake. Oh, Kendall Lake. Here, oh, this is that was, what that is there? Yeah, uh -huh. this was a plein air. It was in a in a plein air competition in Pen, in Peninsula. I don't know, maybe two years ago, something like that. I so, just went yeah, by there recently, and I thought it was it was a few years back. I think they dredged the Kendall did they, Lake. Did they? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And it's about time to do it. But I remember they used to have a toboggan run. And I think it went, of course, the lake had to be frozen because right. it went right out into the run. I think it was even up into the 70s, maybe the 80s that they took it. Okay. But it was like a hard wooden thing. But it was right. a, it's a lake that's kind of not in use as much as it should right. be because it's, so it's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. And a lot of it's hidden from the road, but there's some beautiful points there. Yeah. It's just, it's gorgeous. I remember sitting there that afternoon, and in a few hours, I mean, I only saw, I don't know, four or five people. It's like this yeah. is, you know. It's not a, sw a swimming lake, but I think there's fishing done there. People were and they fishing. Try to, People they do to fish do and just walking around. So, Well, uh, thank you very much. We've already, see how fast the half see, hour goes? I know, it did. It was <laughs> great. I'll go paint more so you can have me back yes. someday. I'll try something new. All right, we'll do it. <laughs> thank you, Alan. Thank you. Thanks for joining us here today at Artists at Work, and welcome back for next month. We'll have a new surprise artist. Yes, thank you.